never get bored of this view. I never get bored. Look, I've got my fog. I've got my fog. Oh, hello, Benjamin. Oh, I'm chuffed a bit. Yeah, we're going to go down in the I am chuffed. I stayed in Hammersmith last night. I went out with, did a photo walk with Josh Jack and Sean Tucker after Sean Tucker's um, book presentation, book show. I, don't, I can't think, sorry, Sean. I can't think what you'd call it. It was fantastic, by the way. He's a, he's a, he's a very, very intelligent chap. Really, really lovely bloke. And uh, really good to meet Josh Jack, who's been a hero of mine. If I sound shit, <laughs> it's because I am. Um, Josh Jack, if you don't follow his Instagram, check him out. He's an absolute... What a genius with the camera, a very, very, uh, very inspiring bloke. Spoke to him for hours last night. It was wonderful to meet him, watch the football, and uh, yeah, very inspiring. But I'm going to go out today and do pretty much the exact opposite of what Josh Jack <laughs> advised me to do. Because he was saying that his idea of sheep photography is, is being able to create images that are, are unrepeatable. Now, I suppose to a degree, every image is unrepeatable, exactly. But the principle, for example, somebody walking in front of Benjamin over there, that is repeatable. You could see one of my photographs today in this video and go, that's cool, I'll go and do that. And you can come down and get obviously a different person, a slightly different composition, different lens, whatever, different editing, but the principle is repeatable. So uh, very, very inspiring. Look at Josh's work and uh, yeah, you'll see what I, what I mean by irrepeatable images that have got meaning, that have got interest, so yeah, very, very cool. So yes, we are down at Benjamin today, and the idea is, I'm gonna, look at it. It's friggin' awesome, the idea is, I don't need to tell you what's going on, that's epic. Right, why do I sound like a bag of shit? Well, it was a long day yesterday, came down for Sean's talk, did a shoot in the barbecue, and met them, a few beers watching the football, and then slept in the van. <laughs> it was minus five, it was minus five, look at this, look at this. Are you joking? Oh, have you ever seen anything so brutal? Oh, let's get a shot. I can't believe it, it's frigging, it's clearing. It's clearing. Right, let's get a shot quick. I can't believe it. Right, so I've gone over to the X100V because the 33 mil wasn't wide enough. And I thought the mist would have finished over there, so I would have ended the photograph, but now the mist is down there. I don't know what to do. Uh, I don't know what to do. Um, I need to work the scene and try and find something. For now, I'm just going to back button focus at infinity. Morning. Good morning. A can of Cronenberg at nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Five o'clock somewhere, isn't it? <laughs> All right, let's just try and work a portrait frame. I think this top left-hand corner, so you'd have pretty much, yeah, that works. So that top left-hand corner, somebody interesting bottom right, absolutely no chance this is, uh, going to be anything as special as it should be considering the conditions but no one's going to walk past here at a trilby are they? There's too many people now as well so I'm flipping gutted. The other shot I want to do is from over there, like I've, I've taken a shot from over there before uh, with the mist in the background, I think that probably, I'll give this probably 10 or 20 minutes then leg it and try and get that shot. Uh, Mo, Mo. Nice to meet you Mo. Mo. Nice to meet you. Yeah. yeah. I, my dear, I'll, I'll, put, I'll put you in the video, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Cheers, man. Nice to meet you. Thanks you so much. Care, mate. Take care, man. Mm. Actually, actually, I've just had an idea. What if I go? If I, I've had an idea. If I go to put the ND on on the Fuji, on the X100V, the built-in ND, and do a blurry shot again. F8, tenth of a second, focused infinity. Um, if I get a bike or something flying past me, I'm wondering if a, wondering if eighth of a second is too slow. Actually, a tenth of a second. Let's go fifteenth of a second. All right, there's a bike coming up. It's 
Let's have a look at that. Ah. Ah. Do you know what? It's almost bang on. Actually, really, really cool. The, um, the thing I don't like about it, it's a very, very minor thing. It's a really, really cool shot, but the, the handlebar is kind of touching the top of that light. But the idea is fantastic, so how would I get rid of that? I think it's, just get the camera lower down, but I love the way, like, oh, it's not sharp, is it? It's even sharper than that. Let's try again, get a sharper one. That's cool. That is cool. Um, I Oh, two box at once. Right, okay. Okay. Yeah, another bike. This is now at 15th, sorry, 25th of a second. If we can hand one in front of the camera then. Another bike come in, right on the floor. Corners are good. Guy, the guy who's in my shot on the right. It's a guy on the right hand side ruining the shot. So I can't take it with him there anyway. But shutter speed, 25th of a second, gives us a sharper shot of the background and enough motion for the for the bikes. Which we're not getting any of. I like a few of them. I like a few of them. Let's look at the shutter speed. 25th of a second, I said 1,000, you wouldn't tell it. Oh, there's a bike coming now. Bike coming down here now, so let's try one more time. There's motoring down there. Motoring. struggling a little bit with this because uh, the bike shot is the only shot I like. Um, oh, I left my coffee cup over there. Sort of, it's a good idea to sometimes just walk away from a scene and come back. So um, that's what I'm going to do. Walk away, come back, go see the other shot and get a new uh, a new perspective on it. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, you're a life pursuit app. Means you know what you're doing, huh? Oh, I won't go that far. <laughs> it's, just, it's still also on everything else. Is it? Yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. <laughs> At least but, you just can't blame the camera, though. That's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> no, there is that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you got anything at the morning? Yeah, I think I just got a uh, slow shot with the bike going past there. It was quite nice. Yeah. Uh, but oh, you don't really get any charismatic subjects here, do you? So it's, no, it's just it's, tourists, isn't it? It is. But I mean that that mist and oh, some it's, of the birds flying across. The it's breathtaking, else. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's lovely. yeah. It's I'm going to wander down that way now and see if I can get another angle with the mist. It's yeah. kind of more in the background. Well, YouTube, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah nice. Nice, to meet you, nice to meet you, Dave. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Listen, have a good day, shoot. Yeah, yeah. Good to meet you, Dave. God bless, mate. Yeah, All take the best. care. See you, pal. See you. Have a good bye. day, mate. Bye, bye. Right. I'm a bit devastated, to say the least. The fog's going, um, and I'm not. I've got, I've got nothing in the area that I got told off by Josh Jack again last night for <laughs> shooting through a bin because it's too cliche. So I'm not even inclined to do that. <laughs> it's a bit discouraging, isn't it? Uh, 20 minutes is as long as I'm going to give this location because I'm terrified of losing the fog. And I know 
that I can improve my bike shot over here. Um, I'm thinking of changing lenses just to get a completely different type of shot. Sorry, darling. It's a completely different type of shot. Um, but I'm going to stick with the 35. Stick with what you know. Just Even if I get one, one shot, I'm happy with one. It just doesn't make sense that you can come to a place like this where the conditions are freaking fantastic and not get shot after shot. Shot after shot. Why ain't it happening? Not street photography really, but look at this. That for symmetry. Actually it looks cool as hell the GoPro with the mist going over it. So I've taken a few shots up there, trying to get everything perfectly in the middle. It does not bad. It does not bad. Another another composition there look. Portrait, fantastic. I've made notes on this video as well. This is actually part two, so if you haven't seen part one, I'll put that link wherever that goes in the corner there. But I've got a few notes on this video because this was a bit a uh, bit of a learning one looking back on this one as well. So um, as I said, if you haven't seen part two, part one, check that out first. But I actually want to mention that um, trying different methods of, of shooting is really important because this is another example of a shoot where I got there and just felt, even though the environment was really inspiring, I should have got some really, really cool shots. It should have been easy. I should have been running around screaming like a kid. Um, I just didn't feel like it was working. So luckily, I'd recently been experimenting with, with um, slower shutter speed. So I've been using the, the Fujifilm X100V, which has got the built-in ND8, really, really handy tool, which I actually forget largely that it's actually capable of doing that, but it's got a built-in three-stop filter. Now, that will enable me to always be able to shoot a slower shutter. So that you get some really, really creative effects with a slow shutter. If you haven't done that, you need to give it a go. But not only just give that a go, research some different ways of shooting. So it might be that you've never shot abstract street photography before. It might be that you've uh, you've not done ICM street photography or whatever it is. But have something um, like a project that you've always got in your back pocket. That if you ever get to a location and think, I'm, I'm just not feeling it. There might, be, there might be something, it might be that you're working reflections or something like that. Have a project, a long-term project, something that never ends, that you can build on. And every single time you get somewhere you think, I'm stuck, the light's not working for me. Because let's face it, if every time you did street photography and you relied on really, really nice light and contrast, people were walking through light, you're going to struggle largely most of the time, especially in the UK. Um, definitely in Wales. Um, but if you've got a project you can think, well, hang on, it's not working for me. Let's try and do some abstract or let's try and do some um, fine art or let's try and do some uh, slow shutter speeds or something. You've got something to fall back on. So research different methods and see if you've got something that you can prat around with. Always keep a filter in your bag if, if, if that's what it takes. But just have three or four strings to your bow as opposed to that one type of photograph where somebody's walking through nice light and everything will, looks cushy. Another thing I mentioned was walking away. Now, I don't often have, I'm not really one of these, but if, if you get to a place you think, I'm, I know that the scene's fantastic, but nothing seems to be happening. Walk, walk around the block, just go for a coffee or go for a cake or a sandwich or whatever and come back, approach that same scene from a different angle or just spend a bit of time away from it and just come back later on in the day when the light might have changed or the weather's changed or the people have changed or whatever it is. Uh, go back there in rush hour or go back there when it's quiet. But either way, just like I, I, I intended to do in this video, walk away, hit actually back fired on this occasion. But having the, the I think, well, hang on, let's love this scene but nothing's happening now. I'm gonna go away for five minutes, come back, or go away for 10 minutes, come back. And I think it's a really, really good thing to try and remember, especially if you're shooting alone. If you're, working, if you're shooting with other people, it gets a bit difficult because obviously everybody wants to just keep walking and seeing new things. But um, I think with a scene like that morning, go away and coming back was, was a good idea, but it obviously cost me in the long run. So it's a good thing to remember though, walking away and... Um, you might be watching this video thinking, why didn't you take the shot from underneath the stairs, the honeypot location, the shot that everybody gets, and that's pretty much in a nutshell why I didn't. However, watching this video back, I'm actually kicking myself that I didn't get a record shot from underneath the bridge with all that fog going over, the mist going over Big Ben and, and Westminster. It would have looked fantastic. Now, I cut off my nose to spite my face there because I didn't want it, because of my, I suppose, pride, because I didn't want to take that uh, cliche shot. I actually 
lost out. And what I should have done was ran down there, taken that photograph with or without anybody in it. If it didn't have anybody in it, it wouldn't have mattered. Just to see that scene from that famous view underneath the bridge would have looked amazing. And um, because it's overshot, as you can see people under the subway, under the thing, you know, taking photographs, I always stay away from those honeypot locations. That's silly because if I'd have just gone there, taken one shot and then literally buggered off, and, and um, that photograph could have had that magical ingredient due to the mist that separated it from all the photographs you've seen from that same location. Uh, short of having the Milky Way coming out the back of it as well, there wasn't really much I could have done to add to that. But I really do regret that. It was a bit of a silly move, uh, my um, pride getting in the way there. Now, uh, the other thing is run projects, kind of touched on that as well. If you're not running a project, Think of three or four things that you can have a long-term project. It really is important, and I think it's something you can always have a reason to pick up your camera, always have a reason to go out. Now, arriving earlier is another thing. I don't do it enough, and I always get there very often. If it's a professional shoot, then I always arrive much earlier than I need to, but if it's street photography or landscape photography, you can never really arrive early enough because so many times you think, oh, um, I'd love to have a bit of time just to waste around here um, before the light starts kicking off or something like that. So just arriving that extra hour early, especially on that morning, is absolutely devastating. So I'm definitely never gonna forgive myself on that one. The other thing is aim for one shot. Now this is an ethos I've, I've adapted the last couple of videos. It's actually something that's really saved my mentality because if you take one photograph that you're really happy with, work the scene, if it's a fishing kind of photograph, and as opposed to a, a, a fast action candid shot where it's just happened like that. But just when you see a shot that you like, take it in, really, really appreciate it. Take, like, take the time to look at the photograph in the camera, and really acknowledge that it's a good photograph. You can't make it any better. You're happy with the way, the way it's come out, 100%, you've looked at your settings, and just once you've got that one photograph that you're really, really pleased with, it just affects your mood for the rest of the day. And, and also, you don't need to come back with more than one photograph of a standard that you're already happy with. And um, because I was filming for you guys, I always want to try and get at least five photographs from every shoot that I really like. And that puts pressure on me and it starts me enjoying it. But when I actually took the time to look at one of these photographs and I thought, I really like that, I just didn't care about the rest of them. I thought it was one I really, really liked. And um, I'll let you let me know in the comments which one you think it was. But at the bike shots, I was really pleased with it. Um, and you know, coupled with the experimentation of different shutter speeds, it really worked. So that made my day. So just having that one photograph was enough for me. Um, but yeah, I was only there an hour and a half anyway. So cool. I'll leave it there. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll see you in the new year. Have a good one. And uh, see you soon. Take care.